The next step is going to be dividing this guy into separate pieces so that we can use them as insert brushes to create our creature. And first thing we're going to do is go up here to this original sculpt and delete that. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to turn on the rest of these subtools and I'm going to do underneath this merge menu, I'm going to hit merge down a couple times. Just merge this all into one subtool. And just to play it safe, I'm going to go underneath the polygroups and I'm going to do group visible. So this is all one polygroup right now. And of course now to these one polygroup, I want to slice them up in a bunch of different polygroups so that we can take those slices and make them their own insert meshes to create our creature. So we're going to take some body parts off this guy, so we're going to make some polygroups. Uh, an easy way to do that is hold down Control shift use Select Rect, and just use Visibility. Um, I only want one arm when I'm doing my insert meshes, so I'm going to, turn, I'm going to hit X and turn Symmetry off, and then hold down Control shift drag, and then hold down Alt and get rid of that other arm. So this is one way to do it. You can do polygroups, auto groups, or group visible over here under your polygroups with that showing, and that'll make its own polygroup. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that isn't the most nice selection here. It's pretty ragged. So one way we can do this is hold down Control shift let's go to Select Lasso. I'm going to go in here, so I wanted to cut right across this elbow. So right on this edge, I'm going to hold down Control shift and select that edge. And then Control shift s to kind of widen that gap a little bit so I can get, get my um, visibility in there. Then hold down Control shift I'm just going to show from the elbow to the hand. So now with this nice clean selection showing, I can do group visible and get a group that way. Um, but that takes a little bit long and there's a little bit faster way to do it and it if I want to get anything that's not perfectly on an edge loop already I kinda of have to use this method which is hold down control shift go to slice curve and instead of using the curve brush or the curve stroke here I'm going to change it to the curve lasso so we're gonna slice curve with lasso and what I'm going to do is anywhere where I want to cut something out I'm gonna hold down control shift and just make a, a lasso selection over that so we'll go ahead and just make a lasso selection at the top of his head here. We can use that as an insert brush. Um, you can do his hand individually. Here. And looks like we already grabbed his leg accidentally there. Um, that's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and cut him off at the knee. And let's go ahead and grab his whole leg here. There we go. Now it might be kind of hard to tell, but these are actually two different polygroups. I'm going to hold down Control Shift, go back to Select Rect, and just to kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this, and then everything that's visible here, I'm going to make its own polygroup. So I'm going to Group Visible. So now we've got his head, which is it actually grabbed his leg. We'll go ahead and Control Shift Alt drag that out of the way, and we'll Group Visible his head one more time. So there we go. We're a little bit more cleaned up. So we got his head. Hold down Control Shift and just click his legs and his arms. All right, I think everything's working good. So let's go ahead and grab his arm real quick. Hold down Control Shift and slice curve, and we'll grab his arm here. So we've got his whole arm, we've got half his arm, and we've got his hand. So we can do those all as separate insert meshes if we want to. I'm also going to grab his chest and his back, and we're going to run into a little bit of a problem here because when I hold down Control Shift and slice his chest here. It's definitely going to go through his arm and start creating some really weird polygroups in here. So I can kind of alleviate that by going to Select Rect. I'm going to Control Shift Select this yellow piece here. I'm going to hold down uh, Control and Tap to mask it out. Control Shift to bring everything back, and then Control Tap again to invert my selection. So I'm masking out these polygroups here and leaving this one unmasked. Now when I do Control Shift and we'll go back to our slice curve, and I grab his chest here. It's not going to make it a separate polygroup. It is still going to cut through this arm, but I'll show you a really cool way to clean that up. So we'll go ahead and grab his chest here, and we'll grab his back. So we can use that. So this is his own polygroup. Now, like I said, we're getting some weird issues in here where it's actually slicing through it. So it's still one polygroup, but it's doing some really nasty things with the geometry. So what I'm going to do is hold down Control Shift. We'll go grab our Select Rect again. Hold down Control Shift and tap this piece. So let's go ahead and clean this up. And actually, before we do that, we're going to need to du duplicate this geometry out so we can grab that detail back. So I'm going to duplicate first, grab the second one, hide the first one, and we'll clean this one up. So under Geometry, I'm going to Control Shift tap this section right here with the bad geo in it. I'm going to go under Key Remesher. I'm going to do Same and hit Q Remesh. What this is, is anything that's visible, it's going to Q Remesh 
and either keep it the same density of polygons that it has, you can half it or you can double it depending on what you're looking for. I just wanted the exact same amount of polygons and have a nice Curie mesh and look what it did. Gave me an awesome geo using the same polygon density and now it's perfectly cleaned up. So let's go ahead and do it with this one as well. Same Curie mesher. Perfect. So we got new geo there, new geo on the arm. Everything else looks pretty good. Um, and only one last little cleanup thing it looks like we have to do is hold down control shift and then control shift drag. Let's go ahead and add those loose end edge loops back onto this one. So we'll go back under poly groups and do group visible. And one more thing, it looks like we lost a little bit of detail. So we're going to go ahead and turn that top one on and we'll just with our second one that's remesh selected go ahead and hit project all. We'll grab that detail back. So there we are, we got our new geo, the detail projected back, and we got our new poly group so we can go ahead and start making brushes out of these guys body parts. And to kind of speed this process up, I'm going to dock the edit menu over here so I have access to the undo slider when I get some undo history going. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this top mesh right here. We don't need that anymore. So we've got our mesh here that we will have all divided up into the different poly groups. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and control shift click his face here. Turn off polyframe. And I'm also going to turn on the floor. I'm going to turn off X and Z so just the Y of the floor is showing. And the reason I'm doing this is to make sure that all of my mesh insert brushes are consistent. And what I mean by that is, you'll see on the grid plane right here you've got a blue line which is Z forward and a green line which is Y up. So I want to make sure, just to be consistent, that all the meshes that I'm going to create are going to be, as I'm dragging them out as an insert mesh, I want them to be looking Z forward. So this will make more sense as I go through it. So we've got his head here, and in order to get his head just on the origin and ready to go, what I'm going to do is just a really quick fix of deformation and unify. So I'll put them right there on the origin, just where I want it. And I'm also going to do a little bit of cleanup. And to make that easier on me, I'm going to go to Geometry, Delete Hidden, go to Polyframe, go to my Poly Groups, and do an Auto Group. So you can see I've got some bottom teeth I want to get rid of here. So I'm going to Control Shift click the head, Control Shift drag, and then Control Shift click these eyeballs on the teeth. And then with just these bottom teeth I want to get rid of, so I'm going to Control Shift drag again to invert my selection or my visibility. And then I'm going to go to uh, Geometry, Delete Hidden. And I'm actually going to clean up a little bit of this as well. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift and start making a lasso selection. Hold down Alt and get rid of these uh, little pieces here. Actually, I'm going to hold down. I'm going to hit X as well, so I can go across the X axis. Let's go ahead and get rid of these little stragglers here. There we go. It's a little bit cleaner. So then I'm going to go to Poly Groups and I'm going to Group Visible again because I want this all one poly group again. And then I'm going to go to Geometry, Delete Hidden. And I think this one's good to go. So as I'm drawing this head out on my mesh, he's going to be looking directly at me because his face is going Z forward. Now we have to go back to our body and get our other pieces. And the easiest way to do that is to take this mesh as it is, hit duplicate, and this will be our insert mesh right here. So we're going to just duplicate that off and just hide it. And then with this one selected, we're going to step back through our undo history all the way back to 1. And we're back where we started. And then we can just go ahead and grab some more pieces off of him. So we'll go ahead and Control Shift click his arm, Control Shift drag, and we'll go ahead and grab the rest of his arm as well. We'll grab this little piece here. And then Control Shift drag to invert that visibility selection. And then with his arm showing, let's go down here again to deformation. And we're going to unify that. Now, here's where the arm is rotated incorrectly. Is if I was to draw this out with a Z forward out, it would drag out just like this. And more than likely what I want to have happen is I want to drag out the arm so that this back hole is actually facing my object. So it's dragging out just like this. So we're going to need to rotate our object around. I'm going to hit X to go out of X symmetry. Hit W to go into transpose. And first I'm going to drag this down. And then I'm going to rotate it around. And I'm just going to move it right into place to be consistent with the other ones. I'm looking straight down on it. I'm going to make sure it's rotated so that the hole is kind of straight back. And it's centered right on there. And this is Z out now. So you can see that blue line right here is the Z axis. So now it's facing Z out. So when I draw it, it's looking at me just like this. And looks pretty good to me. Now instead of duplicating this off, 
and then going back and stepping through the history and grabbing his elbow down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this off. It's just the way I want it. I'm going to hide that eyeball, and I'm going to duplicate this thing again. And then with this showing, I'm going to grab his and get rid of, oops, let's go ahead and hide this original. I'm going to get rid of this bicep piece and this extra little straggler piece. And then with just this showing, I'm going to move it up. And again, I want this hole to face back to what I'm drawing it on. So I'm going to rotate this around, move it back, rotate this up. There we go. So this is my insert mesh oriented the way I want. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to duplicate this one now. Hide my original. And control shift click that arm. And now I've just got the hand. So I'm going to rotate this up just a bit. Move it back. And I think that'll work just fine. So that'll be my hand mesh. So now I've got my hand. I've got his elbow down. And I've got his whole arm. All his insert meshes ready to go. So I'll step back to this original one I duplicated from. And then step back through the undo history. Or back to where we started. Uh, we can do the same thing for his leg. Control shift click, control shift drag, control shift click, control shift drag, inverting the visibility. So we've got our leg here. Let's go ahead and unify this. Rotate this around because remember we want that hold of face backwards and Z out to be where we're looking. I'm gonna move this down. And looking from the top, I'll rotate this just a tad. Okay, so now when I drag it on, it'll be looking at us just like this. Let's duplicate this. Control shift click to get rid of that top piece. And we're going to use the knee down and rotate this up so that the hole's facing straight back. There we go. And again, just so when I'm drawing it out, it's going to be pointing straight at me and the hole's going to be ready to be inserted into the other mesh. So I think we're done with that one. Let's go ahead and duplicate that one off. And we'll step back through our undo history. And we'll just do one more. I'm not going to do all the brushes right now, but let's go ahead and do his chest because this one's kind of a special case because it requires a little bit of cleanup. So we've got his chest selected, and we'll do deformation unify again. And let's go ahead and hit Control shift and get rid of this piece, and we'll do unify again to put it across the x-axis. Now this one isn't mirrored correctly. And remember, everything, if I hit control shift, his whole body's still kind of there. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of that just to make this a little bit safer. And again, you don't have to do that. It's when you create your insert mesh brush, it's only going to create an insert mesh of what the visible geometry is. It's going to disregard everything else. Um, but to make this a little bit easier on us, what we're going to do is go to geometry and delete hidden. And then with all that stuff deleted, we'll just do a mirror and weld. And that's across the wrong axis. So we'll go ahead and move this over a bit. It's a little bit closer to center. And then we'll do a mirror and weld again. That's a little bit better, but actually I want to go ahead and have this not so far spread out. So I'm going to actually go to deformation, mirror, and then mirror and weld. And I think that'll work. So that'll be our chest piece. And it's Z forward how we want it. Um, I'm going to rotate this down just a little bit. Alright, and that'll be our perfectly symmetrical chest piece. Ready to go. So if you are actually ready, let's go ahead and duplicate this off. And we can step back through the undo counter and we're back to our body. What you, first thing you want to do is go to File, Save As, and you want to save this brush as a working file so that you can always go back and it's like, oh, I didn't quite get that arm just the way I wanted it or it's oriented incorrectly. You can always go back to this file and recreate your mesh insert brushes. And the next thing we want to do is get rid of this top polygon or this top subtool. Now, you don't have to. If you want to actually use this whole body as an insert mesh, you can certainly keep him there. But when you do create multi-mesh, it is going to add him. So what I can do is I can delete him out. If I want to just in case I can clone him off and then delete him out of here. And remember you've already saved this file so you haven't lost him forever. You can always go back to the working file and he'll still be there. But just for organizational purposes I'm going to go ahead and delete him out of these. Out of these. I'm going to go ahead and show all of my subtools here and just as a gut check I'm going to go to expose. I'm going to make sure, turn polyframe off, that everything is oriented the way I want. So we've got his head facing forward, leg, arm, foot. It all looks good to me. I'm going to hit expose again. Now with all these subtools, I'm going to hit B, and instead of hitting 
create insert mesh, I'm going to create insert multi mesh. So when I hit that, it's going to create an insert multi mesh. And now with this button or with this brush selected, I can hit the M key and that'll actually bring up all his different insert multi meshes right here. So just to do a little quick practice, let's go ahead and bring up a sphere 3D edit and I'll make it a poly mesh. And just to show you what we're doing here, I can hold the control, make a poly group, let's turn polyframe on, hit control W to make a poly group, and then I'm going to grab my brush, and this new brush we have, this is this insert mesh we just made, hit the M key, and these are the objects that we added to it. So I'm going to have it grab his arm, I'm going to drag his arm out, I'm going to position his arm, and again, this hole is where it's going to connect with this mesh. Let's go ahead and move this out, let's scale it up just a bit so it matches that hole a little bit better. Move this into place. That looks good. I'm going to control swipe and control swipe again. And it's going to combine this arm and it's going to figure out the topology that needs to happen between the sphere and the arm. And it's all perfectly sculptable here and you can just keep adding pieces as you as you go. So that's the basics of the mesh insert brush and of course the next thing you want to do is go to brush. Well, let's select our brush first. Hit B. Grab that insert multi mesh brush and just to test we're going to hit M. This is the one we want. You can go to Brush, Save As, and make sure you save this brush out. And if you want to, you can actually have a visible subtool here. It's kind of a cool icon. You can go to Brush, hold down Alt, and hit Select Icon. And that could be your icon for your zombie multi-insert brush if you'd like. And then go to Brush, Save As, and save this off as Insert Zombie Bits 002. Go ahead and save it off, and then you have your brush saved and you always have your working file saved so you can always go back and make any changes there. And I hope you enjoyed watching how I created the Zombie Bits Insert Multi Mesh, and as always, keep checking back for new training videos at pixelogic.com.